Brian Cesarek, the right fielder, a junior who leads the team with a 425 batting average. Batting fourth, the third baseman, Scott Coolball, a junior who's hit a school record 15 home runs. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, Scott Bryant, a freshman used mostly as a pinch hitter. He's hitting 250. Batting sixth, the second baseman, Todd Haney, a senior who made the all-tournament team in the regional. He's hitting 316 this season. Batting seventh, first baseman, Lenny Bell, a junior. He likes to hit left-handers. He's hit three home runs against them. Batting eighth, the left fielder, Rusty Crockett, a junior who's hitting 348 since becoming a starter two weeks ago. And batting ninth, the catcher, Brian Johnson, a sophomore who is 357 with six RBIs in the Central Regional. And defensively for the Razorbacks, Dan Campbell in left, Rod Moore, the center fielder over in right, Scott Pose at third base, Dan Thomas, Mike Sisko is the shortstop, Kelly Zane at second, Jim Kramer's over at first base, Andy Skeels does the catching, and on the mound, the big left-hander, John Sibahar, 6'3", 210, 11-1 on the year, good fastball, curveball, and occasional change, Sam. And there he is. Second time he'll be facing Texas this season. Went into the eighth inning, tied 1-1 with them in the conference championship game. Texas went on to win that game 4-1. Garner pitching a two-hitter. And Elenis Westbrook, the center fielder, steps in wearing that plastic protector around the face. He suffered a serious facial injury back in March. And he's hit with a pitch. First pitch of the ball game hits him in the left foot, and Westbrook is on. He's got good speed. Little early College World Series jitters right there by John Sebahar. No question about that. Westbrook was injured in an interest quad scrimmage. Probably a case right there. You hang on to the ball a little too long. You see it hit him in the foot. That's the tendency with a pitcher. When you're a little tight, you don't have that loose wrist. Hang on to it long. First place it goes in the dirt and inside. And Westbrook, who likes to run, has stolen 21 bases and 23 tries. Good man with the bat at the plate, Kobe Curlin, the senior who played in the 1985 World Series. He was the setup man then, a leadoff man, took a lot of pitches. This year he's been swinging the bat well. He's a switch hitter, he's hitting 394. Good pitch from Sibahar that time. Should point up too, Sam, that Sibahar uh, does not have a good move to first base does not hold runners on very well and Westbrook's of course a base feeling threat and Westbrook's has a good lead at first fastball misses outside count is one and one Bill Rosenberry is the man calling balls and strikes in game three Bob Nelson at first base Jim Garman at second and Hank Roundtree the crew chief is the third base this afternoon Count is one and one on shortstop Kobe Curlin. Runner goes, pitch is taken, and the throw down is a good one, and he's out of there. Ooh. Nice throw by Andy Skeels. Catches Elenis Westbrook. Only the third time Westbrook has been thrown out this season. Well, the Razorbacks got a break right there. See this pitch. It's not really a pitch out. It was designed to be a hit and run. The pitch up and away, perfect area for Skeels to handle a ball, makes an accurate throw. Westbrook's, of course, on the hit and run would not get as quick a jump as he would on the straight steal. That's why he was out by quite a margin. Pitch was a ball. The count is two and one on Curlin, and he fouls it back. Curlin in that 1985 season when he was a leadoff man and Billy Bates was the number two man in the order, walked over 100 times. In fact, he has a career record for walks at the University of Texas. 249 walks in 211 games, but he's hit well. 394 batting average coming in. Sebahar's 2-2 pitch. Curveball pops in the air down the right field line. Slicing foul and unable to get to it was the second baseman. Kelly Zane, good try. Big ballpark here at Rosenblatt Stadium. A lot of room in the outfield. 343 down the line, 370. In the alleys and 420 to straightaway center. Bill Bethay, who has been to the World Series 16 times as a coach and player. Cliff Gustafson, the head coach, has 986 college wins, over 1,000 wins in his entire coaching career. Pass on best wishes to Bill Bethay's father, Sam. Very ill down in Texas. Wish him the best. 
Fastball popped up off the first base side and go back into the crowd. That is quite a feat you mentioned. Only Rod Dado of Southern California has been to Omaha more times. I mean, I thought that Cliff Gustafson probably had a condo here <laughs> as many times as he's been here, but that man, Bill Bethay, 16 times, three as a player, 13 as a coach. You know, it was getting old hat for Texas for a while. Uh, they seem to expect to be in the World Series. They had been there five years in a row when last year they didn't make it out of their regional. Arizona won the Central Regional down in Austin. And Cliff Gustafson had wondered what it would be like to watch uh, the games on TV. Thought it might be exciting. He didn't like it at all. <laughs> like sure it better didn't. here. Count is full on Kobe Curlin. And he walks. Ball getting away from Steele. He retrieves it. Curlin is another man. Good base runner. Doesn't have blinding speed, but can pick his spots pretty well. Let's see if they try to put something on with Curlin at first. See the coaching staff of Arkansas setting the defense. Doug Clark, the man up on the steps setting the defense. Here's Brian Cesaric. What a year he's had with a bat, hitting 425 and aiming at a school record. The all-time batting record for a single season at the University of Texas is 417, set in 1949 by Pat Hamilton. Tom Hamilton, excuse me. Curveball misses outside. Talk about some consistency. Now, Kobe Curlin actually won the Southwest Conference batting crown at 453. Now, he's down in the high 300s, but Cesaric, as we pointed out, has never been below 414, and he's right now four and a quarter. That's consistent. Fastball misses. Count is 3-0 and oh to Brian Cesaric. Sibahar pitching very carefully early on and hasn't really gotten a batter out. Westbrook's thrown out stealing. After being hit by a pitch, the walk to Curlin, and now 3-0 count on Cesaric. Got the outside corner. Norm DeBryan mentioned the one thing their pitching staff will do, they will deepen the count, not give in to the hitter. They'll throw a lot of 3-1 breaking balls, 2-0 breaking balls, but in Sibahar's case, with the offensive power of Texas, that could do them in, those base on balls. Sibahar challenging Cesare 3-1. Cesare took it. Pretty good pitch. Probably a case where a good hitter like Cesare on 3-1 and one is looking for a zone. He say, I want that pitch like below the belt or I'm not going to offer at it. Curlin's got a good lead at first. He's not running. And ball four to Cesare with a curveball. So back-to-back -back walks to Curlin and Cesare on 3-2 pitches. And Texas with runners at first and second. One man out. That's head coach Norm DeBryan there with a pen in his hand. You see pitching coach Dave Jorn shaking his head, I'm sure. The approach that John Sibahar are taking right now, it's okay to not give in to a hitter, but early in the count, if you don't show the hitter you can throw strikes, you're asking for trouble, and he's in it right now. With Scott Coolball, the big power man for Texas, swinging and missing at a fastball. Coolball. As Jim told you earlier, it's set a school record with 15 home runs this season. That's where a pitcher ought to gamble on the count. The first pitch, go ahead and challenge your hitter. That ball's right down the middle, but cool ball doesn't know whether it's fastball or curveball on the first pitch. One man out, Arkansas defense looking for two. Cool ball fouls it off the right side out of the ballpark. Down is 0 2. Good now crowd in the bleachers in right and left field, Jim. Excuse me, Sam. Now that strike zone for a pitcher expands. When you're 0-2, Coolbaugh knows anything close. He's a little more apt to swing at than if it's 2-0 and or 3-1. That's just common sense. First time Sibahar has been ahead of the hitter. 0-2 on Scott Coolbaugh. Missed high and away. Coolbaugh with 78 RBIs this season. Is hitting 361. Has 88 base hits. 76 runs scored and 18 doubles. Curl on the runner at second. Got good speed. Cesaric the runner at first. 
with a big lead. Fastball hit high in the air to center field. Rod Moore started back, now comes in and makes the catch. Two men out. The runners remain at first and second for Texas. And Scott Wright, the designated, Scott Bryan, excuse me, the designated hitter, steps in. Bryant starting in place of Mike Patrick, a left-handed hitter who's normally the DH. Bryant, a freshman from San Antonio, 6'2", 200 pounds. Curveball for a strike. He wants whether Bill Rosenberry is like our two home plate umpires yesterday, John Bible and Hank Roundtree. Very liberal strike zone. Fastball hit into right center field and in for a base hit. Curlin around third, heading for the plate. The throw comes in. Curlin scores. Runner Cesaric goes on to third. Scott Bryant holds it first with an RBI single. So Texas hey, makes the walk hey, first. That'd be almost too much to hope for if you're Arkansas to get by with a hit batsman and two walks leading off a ball game. Scott Bryant, good job of going the other way with that pitch. Poses throw is strong enough, but the speed right there, Curlin beats him easily. Tenth RBI of the season for Bryant. Two men out. Texas runners at first and third. And Todd Haney, the second baseman, is in. Hits it in the air down the right field line. It's slicing into foul territory. Pose comes over and makes the catch. Fine running catch by the right fielder, Scott Pose, to end the inning. But Texas capitalizes and scores a run in the top of the first, leading it one to nothing. Let's take a look at the Arkansas Lebron to Bryan in his 18th season. This is his third College World Series. Leading off, right fielder Scott Pose, the sophomore who leads the team with 41 walks and has 20 stolen bases. Batting second, second baseman Kelly Zane, a junior, he was the MVP of the South One Regional. Batting third, first baseman Jim Kramer, the junior who leads the team with a 389 batting average. Batting fourth, catcher Andy Steele, a senior, he's the top power man with 18 homers and 76 RBIs. Batting fifth, designated hitter Troy Eklund, a sophomore is hitting 291 with 12 homers. Batting sixth, shortstop Mike Sisko, a senior who's hitting 353. Batting seventh, the third baseman Don Thomas, a sophomore who made the all-tournament team in the South One Regional. Batting eighth, center fielder Rod Moore, a senior, a good defensive outfielder. He has a 250 batting average. And batting ninth, the left fielder Dan Campbell, a junior who leads the team with 26 stolen bases. And the Longhorn defense in left field, Rusty Crockett in center, Elenis Westbrooks over in right field, Brian Cesaric at third base, Scott Coolball, Kobe Curlin's the shortstop. Todd Haney at second, Lenny Bell at first. Behind the plate, Brian Johnson, and on the mound, the big right-hander, Kevin Garner. There you look at his stats, and this guy, he's one of the few guys I know, Sam, that as good a hitter as he is, he doesn't like to hit on the day he pitches. <laughs> I'd want to be out there hitting fourth if I could hit like <laughs> Kevin Garner. It feels uh, it affects his concentration. He's a left-handed hitter, so Cliff Gustafson uh, took the opportunity to take him out of the lineup. Take a look at the catch by Scott Pose. A good running catch as he's nearing the fence. Well, it really is. I mean, this is a play that does not have a lot of bearing on whether a run score or not, but it points out the ability of Scott Pose. That's very difficult as an outfielder going full throttle with that fence staring you in the face. A very fine running catch. And after a fine running catch, here comes Scott Pose to lead off the ball game for the Razorbacks of Arkansas. Kevin Garner, record of 10 and 3 this year. 2 and 0 against Arkansas. Starts Pose off with a strike. Scott Pose leading the team with 41 walks. 
Good eye. A junior college transfer from Iowa Western Community College. Fastball foul back. You know, early in the year, in fact, we did a game, the Texas-Oklahoma game, and Kevin Garner started that one, got beat 13-3. to At that time, he did not really know whether he wanted to be a full-time pitcher or a full-time outfielder. He really felt like he'd rather be a hitter, but most of the scouts have told him, hey, kid, you got a shot at being a number one draft pick as a pitcher, and chances are early next week he will be. Fastball just missed. Down is one and two on the leadoff man, Scott Pose. Doug Clark is coaching at first base for Arkansas. Dave Van Horn at third base. The head man, Norm DeBryan, in the dugout. Good breaking ball, swung on and missed. And Hose strikes out. The Arkansas hitting strategy is going to be to try to lay off the breaking ball until Garner gets two strikes on him, and you'll see why. You see how that thing disappears out of the strike zone? Another angle. It looks like a strike, but it ends up in the dirt. Very difficult pitch to lay off because of the late, quick break. Kelly Zane, the second baseman, had an outstanding regional, the South One Regional, played in Huntsville, Alabama. Arkansas winning four straight, beating Middle Tennessee State, West Virginia, and Clemson twice. And Garner quickly ahead of Kelly Zane, 0 2. Zane hit 588 in the regional, 10 for 17 with two homers and seven RBIs. One batting average for the season for Kelly Zane. Fouls it off the right side. And notice Arkansas hitters with two strikes on them will choke up on the bat. That's kind of a lost art right there, Sam. That's, That's right. a throwback to old-time baseball. That was the style for years you see right there in your picture. But nowadays, especially on the big league level, that's why the number of home runs and number of strikeouts. Get it down on the end and rip it. <laughs> Outfield straight away on Kelly Zane. One man out, the bottom half of the first inning. Texas leading one to nothing. Breaking ball hit up the middle. Curling over, can't get to it. A ground ball single for Kelly Zane. First hit of the ball game for the Razorbacks. One man out. Zane continues his fine hitting. And you see the value of choking up on the bat and not over swinging. You see Kelly Zane right there, just like he's hitting a little pitching wedge. Just up the middle, right out of the reach of Curlin, got a base hit. Chances are on the end of the bat, wouldn't hit the ball like that. Brings in Jim Kramer, the leading hitter for Arkansas, hitting 389 this season. Set a school record with 27 doubles. And 88 hits. 27 doubles, six triples, and eight home runs. Kevin Garner looking in. Fastball popped in the air to left field, carries back out. And Westbrook, the center fielder, calls off the left fielder to make the catch. Two men down here in the bottom half of the first inning. And the catcher, Andy Steeles, will step in, and he's the power man for Arkansas. Record of 18 home runs, breaking the record previously held by Jeff King and Kevin McReynolds. Jeff King, first round draft pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates last year, playing in the Pirates organization. And Kevin McReynolds playing with the Mets. He's going back home this weekend to play against his former teammates for the first time. That'll be interesting, the reaction he gets out there in San Diego. Ball misses. You wonder why the scouts want Kevin Garner to concentrate on his pitching right there. You see the power that he gets from that motion. Good breaking ball from Garner. The one thing that Texas people talked about with Garner is that he seemed to really gain his concentration in that game against Arkansas in the Southwest Conference title game.
and he beat them four to one, struck out 12, allowed only two hits. Now he's on an uptick, and no question when Kevin Garner coming out of a program like Texas can see Clemens and Swindell and Schiraldi and Acker and all the guys that have gone through there. It's getting close to draft time. He said, hey, that'll do something for your concentration. Just missed inside. Andy Skeels hitting 382 this season. Driven in 76 runs from Thousand Oaks, California. Transferred to Arkansas last year out of Oxnard Junior College. Good breaking ball, but just down low. Three and one. That was C right here, Sam. Three and one count. And Skeels, of course, the power man in the Razorback lineup. Chances are right here he's saying, I'm going to get a fastball to hit at or I'm going to lay off anything else. He should have a good swing at this if it's a fastball. Zane holds. There was a breaking ball. He was out in front. Count is full. That's a sign of the, prog of the progress that Kevin Garner's made as a pitcher. Three and one. Look at this breaking ball. Skeels looking for the blazer. Oops. That's the optical illusion. It doesn't really curve. It's all in your mind. Is that right? <laughs> Runner goes on the full count pitch. It's taken for ball four. Pitching very carefully to Andy Skeels. Garner loses him. And now Arkansas with runners at first and second and two men out. And they'll bring Troy Eklund to the plate. Eklund, the designated hitter this afternoon. There was a possibility that Randy Bob, who is normally the starting first baseman, would be in the lineup. He broke his hand in the Southwest Conference Tournament. was hit by a pitch, his left hand. He's come around pretty well, took batting practice, and hit a couple over the left field fence. But Norm DeBryan is holding Randy Bob out of the lineup, and Bob is a 380 hitter. Troy Eklund is in as the DH. Curveball hit up the middle of base hit. Around third is Kelly Zane. He'll score, and the game is tied. So Troy Eklund rewarding the confidence of his coach. Big hit early in the game for Arkansas. Breaking ball up in the strike zone, and to come right back after Kevin Garner has that one nothing lead is a good sign for the Razorbacks. They have, in two previous meetings against Garner, eight hits in total in two ball games. They already have a couple solid hits in this one. Well, we talked about walks yesterday and a walk already today. It hurts Sibahar in the top half of the first, and it hurts Garner here in the bottom of the first. Mike Sisko, fine shortstop, hitting 353 this season. Steps in. Two on and two out. Good slider. Francisco from Missouri hit 375 in the regional. Three doubles, three RBIs. <laughs> Arkansas and Texas battled for the Southwest Conference title during the regular season, right down to the wire. There's a look at Garner's breaking ball. Falls off to the first base side a little. Ideally, you'd like to see him going more toward the hitter. outside. Texas and Arkansas were tied for the conference lead going into the final weekend of the regular season. They played a three-game series in Fayetteville. Texas won the first, Arkansas the second, and then Garner beat them four to one to win the conference title for Texas. It's the closest Arkansas has ever come to winning the Southwest Conference title. Fastball hit in the air, deep to right center field. Westbrook goes over, but in front of him, it's taken by Brian Cesaric. Cesaric looked at Westbrook and then decided to make the catch. End of one, Texas won, Arkansas won. A walk hurts Kevin Garner. The catch by Cesaric ends the inning. Cliff Gustafson got their heart ticking a little bit right here. You see Westbrook, who's the best defensive center fielder Texas has ever had. 
But he's just back in the lineup after that injury and a little bit of a communication problem there. Cesaric just at the last minute speared that ball. It would be 3-1 Arkansas. Score tied 1-1 as we go to the top half of the seventh inning. This is the second inning. Excuse me, don't want to rush things here. It's going to be a good one. It was a long <laughs> first inning. <laughs> <laughs> This is game three of the 1987 NCAA College World Series. Game four tonight. John Sanders and Joe Morgan will be here to bring you the final first round game between Stanford and Georgia. This is Lenny Bell, the first baseman. Lenny Bell. Leading off the top half of the second inning for Texas. Name's got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> You beat me to it. <laughs> Good fastball. Lenny Bell only plays when Kevin Garner pitches. Garner normally plays right field. Cesarek would play first base. But uh, Garner pitching. Cesarek moves to right. Lenny Bell steps in. Bell hit a home run off Sibahar in that game in which Texas won four to one. Sebahar got no decision, but Bell hit a home run to tie that game. Arkansas was ahead one nothing. Bell has three home runs this season, all off left-handed pitchers. Count is one and two on first baseman Lenny Bell. Change up misses. Sam John Sebahar was a raw commodity at the beginning of this year as a big gangly left-hand pitcher. And you see his mechanics are still not real smooth. A little herky-jerky opens up a little too quick, but has made a lot of progress. Down is full now. Sibahar walked two in the first inning. Down low, third walk. One thing that Norm DeBryan will say is sometimes it's hard to read the left-hander. He can struggle early, but once he settles down, it can be very tough. Well, the one difference we're seeing early already, we're looking at the Arkansas coaching staff and Norm DeBryan. Bill Rosenberry has a little tighter strike zone than the two plate umpires yesterday. That'll have an effect on both of these pitchers. The left fielder, Rusty Crockett, good bunter, steps in. Thomas is in at third. Crockett. Ready to swing away, takes a curveball for a strike. Rusty Crockett took over from Craig Newkirk in left field as a starter six games ago in the conference tournament. And has played well, has hit 348. It's a great Texas name, isn't it? I mean, we talked about it before the game. You cannot imagine Rusty Crockett playing for the University of Vermont. No. <laughs> Got to be playing for Texas. <laughs> Crockett has started at three different positions this year. That changeup stays high. And again, Sibahar behind on the count. taking a lot of pitches on Sibahar early in the ball game. Pop foul out of play. Down remains two and two. Andy Skeels, the catcher, giving it a look. Well, like you said, Norm DeBryan has a hard time reading Sibahar. He can struggle as he has been this first inning in a and a couple hitters here in the second but then he might all of a sudden get his act together however left-hander Ray Harris might even be a more effective pitcher than Sibahar and if he continues to struggle we'll see him by the middle of this ball game Crockett steps out Crockett hitting 308 this season 20 for 65 at the plate 
2-2 pitch is low and inside, and the count is full again. That's four full counts to the eight batters he's faced. And one of them he hit with the first pitch. So it's been a struggle early for John Sibahar. Bell goes. The pitch is popped up in the infield. Short center field. Mike Sisko, the shortstop, goes back and makes the catch. Sibahar, the pitcher, make a heads-up play, go out to cover second base. As the second baseman and shortstop went out for the pop fly. That's a good point, Sam. We saw that identical play last night in the second ball game. Second base left unoccupied, unoccupied didn't affect the ball game. But heads up on Sibahar's part there to run and get over to second base in case that ball dropped. Here's the catcher, Brian Johnson, stepping in against John Sibahar. One man out. Top half of the second inning. Score tied 1-1. Curveballs inside. No excuse for a pitcher whenever the ball is hit to just stand on the mound and see what happens. Now here's an example of what you can do to help yourself. Simple little pop-up into short center. Now watch Sibahar. Just in case that ball would happen to fall, they've got to have somebody on second base make the play and he was there. Throw down a first. Just back is Bell. Good throw by Skeels. Pitch was a strike, and Skeels with a pickoff try almost got Lenny Bell. Now you see Lenny Bell almost take too much of a liberty. Quick snap throw and a nice sweep tag over there by Kramers. Just a little late. 1-1 one, one pitch. Change up. Hit hard down the left field corner. That'll be in there for base hit. One bounce up against the wall. Bell on his way to third is being held up as Johnson goes in with a stand-up double. And Texas now with runners at second and third and just one man out. Brian Johnson, probably the finest all-around prospect that Texas had in a, has had in a long time. His numbers are not that great. You see the ball down and in in the strike zone and off speed. Perfect hitter's pitch, and Johnson ripped it down the left field line. 14th double of the season for Brian Johnson, who had a fine regional on the season. Johnson was hitting 269. He was 5 for 14 in the Central Regional. Alanis Westbrook, the leadoff hitter, up, hits it hard, foul down the left field line. Runners at second and third with one man out. Westbrook to was hit by a pitch leading off the ball game is in again. Arkansas plays uh, first and third, even with a bag, and runners the, the uh, second base shortstop combination back deep. We saw some of the strategy last night late in the ball game. Gary Ward kept his infield back because of faith in his offense. And then Florida State had to play their infield in, or rather Louisiana State. Hit in the air to short center field. Rod Moore coming in, and he won't get there. It drops in for a base hit. One run will score. And with a throw to the plate, a bad play by Rod Moore, Westbrook moves up to second base. Bell came in to score. He had waited and was tagging at third to see if the ball would be caught. He came on to score. The center fielder, Rod Moore, threw all the way through to the plate and allowed Westbrook to make it to second. Well, Moore thought he had a shot at home, but you're right, the percentage play is to throw to second, keep the double play in order. Throws it all the way in on the fly, but much too late to get the man at home. One, it's a bad percentage play. Two, he throws it too high for the cutoff man. And Westbrook moves up, so it's second and third. Still one man out. Kobe Curlin steps in. Texas now leading two to one. Again, the infield at second and short remain back. Thomas at third is even with a bag, and Kramer's at first is about halfway. So Arkansas will seed another run. Should the ball be hit on the ground a second or short? We'll talk about that mask right there in a minute, Sam. Just outside. Remember Dave Parker several years ago had to wear one of those because of a, an injury. He's blocked out right there by umpire Jim Garman. But Alanis Westbrooks playing second base, which would probably be his position as a pro player, injured in the face. Was covering second on a pickoff play and got uh, hit by the knee of Mike Patrick, his own teammate, in an inter-squad game. Patrick came back into second and shattered the eye socket and the 
cheekbone. Very fortunate to be back playing. Curveball inside, and the count is three and one on Kobe Curlin. Left-hand hitter Cesarek is on deck. Sibahar pitching very carefully here to Kobe Curlin. Count is full on Kobe Curlin. And that left-hander that you mentioned, Jim, before, Ray Harris, is begun warming up in the Arkansas bullpen. 3-2 to Curlin. Changeup. Hit on the ground a second. That'll bring in the run. Kelly Zane makes the play to Kramer. Two men out. But Texas now leads 3-1. Good job by Curlin putting the ball in play. Good off-speed pitch, and like you said, Curlin just puts the bat on the ball. I'm kind of surprised that Norm DeBryan is giving the Longhorns that many runs, even though it's early in the game, because Kevin Garner can shut this ball club down in a hurry. Here's Brian Cesarek in against John C. Bahar. The fastball misses. Once again, we'll see the off-speed pitch from Sibahar. Curlin way out in front, but nevertheless, with the Arkansas infield playing back, drives in the run. 1-0 pitch, Cesarek fouls it back and out of play. Two men down, we're in the top half of the second inning. Texas has scored two runs to take a 3-1 lead. That story on oh, Westbrook is worth talking about, Sam, because Co Coach Gustafson plays him at second base to give the pro scouts a look at him. Mm -hmm. And of course, the recent article about colleges not cooperating with pro scouts is not true at all because these guys go out of their way to do everything they can to cooperate with professional baseball. That was an example of it and it cost Westbrook a serious injury. One and one on Cesare. Curveball on the outside corner. John Sibahar, junior college transfer. Eastern Oklahoma Junior College He's from Tulsa steps off. Sibahar was drafted twice by the Giants. 20 years old. They're talking about a balk right here. You see Cesaric stepped out. He wanted a balk. See, but he lifted, Sibahar lifted the back foot, stepped off the rubber, perfectly legal. Once you do that, you're just another infielder. One, two, curveball, hit in the air, deep to right center field, way back there. That ball is one bounce up against the wall. Cesarek is on to second with a double. And Texas now leads four to one. So the Longhorns getting to John Sebahar for three runs here in the second inning. Brian Cesar keeps that front shoulder in beautifully on that breaking ball from Sibahar, a little up in the strike zone. You see where it lands, deepest part of the ballpark, an easy stand-up double. Cesar continues to hit that ball well. The horns are alive. Norm DeBryan is taking a slow walk out to the mound. Tim Brando, what do you see down at the dugout? Ray Harris is ready, Sam. They already got the wave from the bullpen, so Norm DeBryan has gone out to talk with and perhaps already get uh, his pitcher out of the game. They've already surrendered four runs, and as Jim mentioned, they're going to make the move. He's already made the choice. With a pitcher like Garner, you can ill afford to give up that many runs, though it is a rather hot day. Perhaps that had something to do with why Doug Jorn was waiting for a while, thinking this is going to be a long summer's day for both pitchers that were starting this game. Sam, I'd be interested in whether Tim can find out for us whether the way Sibahar pitched was by design or whether he was being just a bit too cautious. I wonder whether Tim could talk with Coach Jorn about that because he really was trying to pick. Well, we'll put him on the case. John Sibahar leaves in the second inning with Texas leading 4-1. Ray Harris, a junior from Jacksonville, Arkansas, comes on in relief with two men out here in the top half of the second inning. And Tim Brando, I think, has found out the answer to your question. Jim, Tim? Sam, uh, 
the, the coaches of Arkansas really believed that Texas would take a number of pitches. They didn't want him to work the, the black too much, though. But the problem was he didn't have command of his curveball. He couldn't get it over. His change was up in the strike zone, and he got hurt with that. So his biggest problem was he just didn't have good command of his pitches. They definitely would have liked to have seen him challenge the Texas Longhorn hitters just a bit more. But the Longhorns are known for taking a number of pitches. And there is a disappointed John Sebahar. Worked an inning in two-thirds. Allowed four runs, all of them earned. The runner at second, Cesarek, is charged to Sibahar. Ray Harris, that herky-jerky motion. The grounder is to third, Don Thomas. Across the Kramers, the side retires. So Harris throws one pitch and closes the inning, but not before Texas scores three runs. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. That's Sibahar. Things didn't turn out so well this time out his second time out against texas what's he thinking right there well he's disappointed sam it's okay to pitch carefully but not too defensively you got to be aggressive throw strikes go after people at cost him see bahar the book closed an inning and two-thirds allowed four hits four runs all of them earned he walked three and two of those walks came around to score devin garner pitching to don thomas the third baseman key right now for Garner, Sam. He's had a long layoff. It's nice to get runs when you're a starting pitcher, but you sit in that dugout for a while, and sometimes a pitcher like Garner have a little trouble getting in his rhythm. Good bat ball. Two and one. Don Thomas, a sophomore from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Just 18 years old. Hit 252 last year. He was drafted by the Dodgers out of high school. Slider misses Green one. Thomas was a good football player at Dollarway High School in Pine Bluff. Fastball misses inside, and Don Thomas has the leadoff walk in the bottom half of the second inning. Cliff Gustafson mentioned, as we alluded to the situation with Norm DeBryan and John Sebahar that DeBryan has a hard time reading Sebahar. He can struggle and then get back in a group. Garner very much the same way. He'll lose his concentration, yeah. walk two, three guys in a row, then get right back in the groove and shut him down the rest of the game. Center fielder Rod Moore. Got some power. Hit seven home runs this year. Second year at Arkansas. Transferred from Seminole Junior College in Oklahoma. Garner misses again. He's thrown six balls of the seven pitches that he's thrown here in the top half of the, or rather the bottom half of the second inning. Catcher Brian Johnson went out to talk with Kevin Garner. You know, last night, Sam, we talked about the unusual outfield alignments. The Florida State outfield played way around to the right field on the weak hitting hitters bottom of the lineup. This is another one again low. Here, Texas with a guy down in the order. He has seven home runs on the year and their left fielder, Rusty Crockett, playing almost to the warning track. Right. Just missed. Walked him on four pitches. Garner didn't like that call. But now he's missed out of the strike zone on eight of nine pitches, and Cliff Gustafson is going to go and have a chat with his right-hander. Garner didn't like the call, but it's an example as a pitcher. The more strikes you throw, the more strikes you get. Last night, guys getting ahead of hitters, throwing strikes, that pitch is a strike. Borderline, but today, Garner has not shown home plate umpire Bill Rosenberry that good control. As a result, he gets that pitch taken away from him. Cliff Gustafson talking with Kevin Garner as right-hander Mark Petkaisek gets loose in the Texas bullpen. Junior Petkaisek has had a fine year and has been the number three starter for Texas. He's 13 and two on the year. And he's getting ready. Kurt Krippner, Kevin Garner, and Mark Ted Kaiser has been the big three for Texas on the mound. Here's Dan Campbell, the left fielder. Didn't know he was going to start until the 
last moment. Punts it up in the air, foul. As Arkansas tries to claw back into the game, down by three with two men on, nobody out. Campbell's got good speed, handles the bad well, a good bunter. Not much pop from the left side of the plate. I think that's why they're having him advance the runners right here, even though they're down three. Bell charging it first. Campbell takes the strike on the fastball. Count is 0-2. Boy, and that's a perfect pitch to punt. If you're a hitter, you want the ball down and strike them. Much easier to get the ball on the ground. That was a good pitch to hit. Campbell just locked on it. Now the infield is back in double play depth for Texas. Runners lead from first and second. Good speed on the bases for Arkansas. Don Thomas at second, Rod Moore at first. Curveball stays a little high. Campbell, a junior college transfer from Los Angeles Harbor Junior College. Fastball hit in the air, deep center field. Westbrook going back and makes the catch. Runner at second, Thomas tags and moves up to third. Well, like I said, Sam, Campbell doesn't have much pop from the left side of the plate. He rips it about 400 to dead center to advance the runner, and you see Westbrook's right there. As Gus had said, the best defensive center fielder he has had at Texas. He has the ability to play shallow, and you see the good footwork there. Going back pedaling on the ball, keeping the whole field in sight. Love to see those center fielders and outfielders that can play shallow, take those little base hits away and still go back on the ball. Paul Blair? You got One it. One of the best. Gary Maddox. Back to the top of the order. Scott Pose. The right fielder takes the ball. You have other ones who have been outstanding center fielders. For example, Omar Marino, but yet played a very deep center field. Gave away a lot of shallow base hits. Texas infield looking for two runners at first and third with one man out. Pitch is down low. Scott Pose. Flip flop him and left field, right field. Fastball, a good pitch. Pose hit 425 at Iowa Western Community College last year sophomore and junior college transfer as a sophomore. Norm DeBryan with a good program at Arkansas and a lot of his players are lost to the pros each year. He's had to fill in with some recruiting out of the junior college ranks. The breaking ball by Garner down to two and two. Now I ask you, does umpire Bill Rosenberry behind the plate let you know it's a strike or not? Yes, he does. He's got a little Dutch Rennert action in there <laughs> with a double pump. He's got good vocal cords, too. <laughs> On the outside corner with a curveball strike three. Pose is caught looking. And it's two men out. Now that's a good backdoor breaking ball by Garner right on the corner. And watch Bill Rosenberry. He reminds me of when I was a hockey fan in Minnesota, the Goldie Shuffle. Bill Goldsberry <laughs> gives you that little double clutch. Bose doesn't like it. It was right there. Good pitch. Second strikeout for Garner and a big one. Two men out. And Kelly Zane, who had a ground ball single up the middle in the first inning, steps in. You remember him, don't you, Bill Goldsworthy? Yes, sir. He invented that every time he'd score a goal, that shuffle like Rosenberry's using behind the plate. Runners at first and third with two men out. Slider just misses. Arkansas, when they have runners at first and third, will occasionally put on a play with the runners. But down by three runs, I doubt we'll uh, see anything like that. They can't Not afford to give up an out here. Not this early in the game, either. That's fouled off. 
you know, we've, one one. Sam, we've talked a lot about the tradition of Texas and all the big glamour players, and deservedly so, but Arkansas also is well represented in the big leagues. Johnny Ray, second mm -hmm. baseman at Pittsburgh. Of course, we've mentioned Kevin McReynolds, Timmy Lawler, left-hand pitcher, who was an outstanding hitter. DH when he was here at Arkansas. Ron Reynolds, backup catcher. Garner behind two and one on Kelly Zane. That's a good name too, Kelly Zane. It's got a Western flavor to it. <laughs> Another junior college transfer out of Butler County Community College. Breaking ball in the dirt. Good block by the catcher, Brian Johnson. And it's three and one to Zane. This is why this young man right here, they would, a lot of the scouts wanted to sign him out of high school. Well, that's great mechanics for a young catcher right there blocking the ball, Brian Johnson. Fastball misses low, and the bases are loaded. Four walks given up by Kevin Garner. And Arkansas with a chance to get back in the ball game. Bases loaded, two men out here in the bottom half of the second inning. And their leading hitter, Jim Kramer, stepping in against Kevin Garner. And of the eight hits in two previous games against Texas, Kramer's has three of them. Best man they could have at the plate right here. Takes it low for a ball. Garner continues to struggle. Peel was made to the third base umpire, then he went around. Umpire at third. Hank Roundtree says no. Big early game matchup. Garner and Kramer. Fastball on the outside corner. Texas leading four to one. The school record at Arkansas, 27 doubles. Inside with a breaking ball. See what kind of confidence Kevin Garner has in his curveball right here, even though some of the pitches are sent in from the bench from pitching coach Clint Thomas. Two and one, he doesn't want to go to three and one. Kramer should get a fastball to hit. Fastball foul out of play. Count two and two. Good catch by the young fan in the crowd. Scott Kubaugh, the third baseman. Checked it out. Hey, brought his glove, and it was well worth it. <laughs> Souvenir from the World Series. Two to the count on Jim Kramer. Well, the base is loaded. And now, everybody will be in motion. Count full. They're really giving Kramer's the right center field gap to Westbrook. Way over in left center field for a left-hand power hitter. That's unusual. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Fastball hits deep to right field. Way back there. That ball is gone. Throw it off the wall. And still in play. All three runs scored in the game is tied. A spaces clearing double by Jim Kramer's. Four. Boy, he ripped that pitch. See why this is not a home run, Sam. Out there, the billboard in Rosenblatt Stadium, the number seven has a little curve to it. You see right there? The ball's going to hit that sign. If it goes any other place but there, that's a grand slammer. <laughs> that little curve on the seven out there kept Jim Kramers from knocking in the lead run. And that's going to be all for... Kevin Garner. Cliff Gustafson makes his second trip to the mound. So both starters are gone in the second inning. Garner is finished. Sibahar was knocked out in the second as well. A very disappointing afternoon for Sibahar. Right now you see the disappointment on the face of Kevin Garner. And here's the pitch that did him in. All the base on balls load him up. 3-2. Kramer's knows the fastball's on the way. Good swing. And just inches from being a home run. Garner walked the bases loaded, and Kramer's cleared him. Pet Kaiser comes on in relief with a game tied 4-4. We'll be right back. 
20th appearance of the season, is third in relief. And he faces Andy Skeels, who pops it up in a short center field. Kobe Curlin goes back and makes the play. Sides retires. Once again, the walk hurting the starting pitchers. Both starting pitchers are gone. We go to the third. Sides 4-4. Four, four. If you're a businessman or woman with the brains, drive, and desire to run a growing company, Inc., the magazine for growing companies, invites you to call now for a free copy of its Guide to Small Business Success. Here's a special report packed with the kind of hard-nosed, how-to business savvy you find in every issue of Inc. That's I-N-C, period. And the Guide to Small Business Success is yours free just for subscribing to Inc. at the money-saving trial rate of $18 for one full year. Then each month, you'll profit from Inc.'s special brand of hands-on management advice, facts, news, and ideas that quickly get down to business, plus insights into the business news straight from the men and women who make it news. So call today for 12 monthly issues of Inc. and Inc.'s Guide to Small Business Success free. That's 800-445-4200. What's more, as a special bonus, you'll get this handsome Inc. soft briefcase free with your paid order. Inc. Magazine pays for the call. Toll free, 800-445-4200. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, the biggest game of the National Hockey League season, Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals, and we'll have it for you live right here on ESPN. It's the Edmonton Oilers and the Philadelphia Flyers, Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement, all set at the Northlands Coliseum to bring you the action. Tom Ease will be there as well as we bring you the finale of the NHL season. The championship, the Stanley Cup, to be won tomorrow night. Right here, the Southwest Conference battle is really heated up early. Each team with a run in the first, each team with three more in the second. The Razorback fans are out in force. The Hogs are here. Kevin Garner, as well as John Sebahar, going only an inning and two-thirds. Garner gave up three hits, four runs, all of them earned. He walked four. And all those four walks came around to score. This is Scott Bryant, the designated hitter. He takes a ball. No, no question why both of them are gone, too, Sam, the starters, because they each threw 50 pitches. You throw 50 pitches in an inning in a fraction. Scott Bryant, the DH, had a base hit his first time up. He gets a base hit his second time up. Hit it hard to right field. Bryant drove in the first Texas run. He's two for two now. Good job of hitting by the freshman, Scott Bryant. Scott Bryant's in there in place of Mike Patrick because he can handle left-hand pitching. Watch the way, way away from the plate, but watch the way he goes into that ball. Boy, look at the head position. Right on, watching that ball hit the bat. Good hitting technique. Todd Haney, the second baseman, takes the bunt. Takes it. Ball one. Don Thomas, the third baseman for Arkansas, in on the grass looking for a bunt. Jim Kramer's the first baseman charging. Haney squares and takes it up high. Count is 2-0. Oh. If you're a base runner, Sam, and you gamble with Ray Harris with that leg motion and arm swing where he takes both hands well above the head, Gives the runners a lot of time. Big kick. Haney takes the strike. Again, squaring around, faking the bunt. Here, we'll get a look at it right here. Watch the arms way above the head. If you count 1,000, 1,000, you start counting on the ticker right there. Boy, that takes too long to get that ball to home plate. You can walk in the second. Fastball hit. Picked up the chalk before it just went outside the third base bag. Ooh. Scott Bryant, runner at first. Nobody out here in the top half of the third inning. And Bryant now goes over to Bill Bethay to make sure he's got the sign right. Brian has been only a part-time player, so 
most of the time when that happens, it alerts the pitcher and he throws over there on the next pitch just to see if anything's on. Breaking ball misses and the count is full. Now Todd Haney looks down to Cliff Gustafson. Nobody out in the runner at first. Let's see if Bryant will be moving. Short tied 4 4. We're in the top half of the third inning. Runner holds. Third ball checked on. Did he go around? Yes. First base umpire Bob Nelson said he went around and Haney is struck out. They might have got a break right there, Arkansas. Let's get another look. Haney. Ah, good call, I think, by first base umpire Bob Nelson. Big controversy there is do you break your wrist? But so many hitters now have become very skillful at holding their wrist and yet dragging the bat across the plate. That's the same as swinging at it. You hit that ball, go down the right field corner. Bob Nelson calls him out. Here's Lenny Bell, the first baseman. Checked it. It's foul. Foul tip at the plate. Brian thought it might have been in the dirt. Started heading for second. A lot of questions. Out. Excuse me, Sam. A lot of questions says, if Kevin Garner is such a good hitter, why didn't he stay in the game? College rule. Gustafson could have announced, hey, Garner's coming out, but he's going to be my DH. But most of Arkansas's pitchers are left-handers like Ray Harris, so he will not be used as the DH. Fastball misses outside. Count is one and one on first baseman Lenny Bell. Bell, a junior from Duncanville, Texas. Curveball stays outside. And again, Harris has to work from behind. Well, we're seeing a real contrast from what we saw in yesterday's action where the pitchers dominated, were aggressive, challenged hitters. Today they're pitching very defensively. Runner goes. Curveball taken. The throwdown is offline. And he's got it stolen. That slow curveball, by the time it got to Skeels, he had very little chance, and he rushed the throw a little bit. That's why when we asked Coach DeBryan about Andy Skeels' throwing ability, he said, it's difficult to judge because our pitchers don't hold men on. Skeels has to hurry like he did right there. The only shot he's got at getting runners is to hurry his throws. Develops bad mechanics. Not really fair to judge Andy Skeels on that throw. Pitch was a strike. The 2-2 fastball is down low, and the count is full on Lenny Bell. Runner second with one man out, and the game tied 4-4 here in the top half of the third inning. Fastball hit hard to left center field, and a nice catch made. One man out, makes it two men out. Dan Campbell going over to make the catch. Not as easy a play as it might look. This ball is ripped. Boy, you see the quick bat speed right there of Rusty Crockett. And even though Campbell had to catch the ball, not the ideal way to catch a ball below your knees. Ball below your knees, you try to catch with the thumbs outward, palms up. The only choice he had right there to snag it, palm down. Here's Texas left fielder, Rusty Crockett. The curveball stays up high. That right, was Lenny Bell. Two men out, a runner at second. Oh. Harris getting the inside corner with a fastball. Despite the record of six and four by Ray Harris, Coach Norm DeBryan feels right now at this point uh, he's his best pitcher. And you can tell he's a left-hander, Sam. You see the cap? <laughs> Left-handers never wear their cap straight. We always got it tilted one way or the other. <laughs> Faked around you, a second. You base. walk out on a diamond, and I don't care if you, you know, you go to Waterloo, Iowa, and you see baseball players walk out on the field. You tell the left-handers because their half, hats are a little at an odd angle. 1-1, one, one, the curveball misses. How about you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm part of that club. I'm not... <laughs> He didn't care about looking neat and looking sharp, huh? Just have that tilt. Tilt to the cap. That's right. 
breaking ball misses. Count is three and one on Rusty Crockett. The runner in scoring position. But the way these guys are working right now, Sam, they'll have to cut the infield in the fifth inning. <laughs> grass has grown about two inches since the start of the game. Fastball for a strike. Down to full. That's eight full counts in the ball game for Sibahar and Harris. You mentioned full counts reminds me of Earl Weaver when he had pitchers like this, namely Don Stanhouse. He called them full pack. <laughs> Earl would go through a full pack of cigarettes an inning just watching these guys go to three and two. Three two to Crockett. Hit hard to left center field. Campbell going over. He can't get there. It goes for the wall. Bryant scores. Texas has the lead. And on his way to third is Crockett, and he'll make it. And a little trouble picking up the ball in the outfield, and Crockett, with good speed, makes it all the way to third. Look at the swing of Rusty Crockett, but he's a good example of the Texas program. Roger Clemens mentioned before the game, if you're not doing the job, there's a guy on the bench that can. And Texas benched their starting left fielder put Crockett in there. He hasn't even seen much playing time and the scouts already want to draft him and sign him. Now Moore has trouble picking up the ball and Crockett's able to make it all the way to third. It's a triple for Rusty Crockett. Here's Brian Johnson. Makes a strike. Johnson doubled his first time up deep in the left field corner. Texas once again has the lead five to four. Ball outside. Craig Newkirk was the starting left fielder for most of the year. And finally, Gus said, hey, we're going to get a look at Rusty Crockett. Newkirk went into a deep slump. Crockett has been hitting well since being inserted in the starting lineup. Crockett, the runner at third. Two men out and a run in for Texas. The Longhorns leading it five to four. Down to three and one. We mentioned of all the Texas players, uh, sports information director Bill Little as well as Cliff Gustafson think this young man right here might be the finest all-around prospect as a player they've ever had. Just a sophomore, 6'2", 195. He's a stallion. He can throw and he's a great catcher. Fastball ball for a strike. The count is full. Make it nine full counts. For Arkansas pitchers. Hit on the ground is short. Mike Sisko is there on the big hop. Goes across the Kramers and the sides retires. But a couple of hits for Texas produce a run. The triple by Rusty Crockett puts Texas back in the lead, five to four. Radio. In Omaha, Nebraska, later this evening for game two. We'll send you after this game to Sports Center, catch you up on all the doings in sports today, and then back out to Rosenblatt Stadium for game four. Stanford taking on Georgia. John Sanders and Joe Morgan will have all the action for you, along with Tim Brando. As we continue our coverage of the 1987 NCAA College World Series, Cliff Gustafson didn't imagine this game was going to be this way. Both starting pitchers gone in the second inning. We're in the bottom half of the third. There's not been a shutout half inning yet in the ball game. Texas a run in the first, three in the second, one in the third. Arkansas run in the first and three in the second. Troy Eklund, who singled his first time up, takes the strike designated hitter. Players refer to these kind of games as zip code games. They look up on the scoreboard and all the numbers up there. No firestones, all zip codes. <laughs> there you see. The scoreboard tells it. Fastball hit on the ground. A Kobe Curl in short. Hit the lip of the grass and he just gets Eklund with a strong throw. Tricky play as the ball hit the edge of the grass and the dirt of the infield. 
Now that's a point we have to make here. Texas has played 55 of their games at home on AstroTurf. You see right there, just a little bit of hesitance on Curlin's part. Difficult hop. Not used to playing on the grass fields. A little different. Here's the shortstop, Mike Sisko. Fly to right his first time up. Pitch in the dirt, Mark Petkaisek. In case people would say, what's Texas doing playing 55 of their games at home out of 67, 68 games? Because a lot of teams like to come to Texas and play baseball. Gus can get them to come down there. Fastball. Petkaisek is pitching against Arkansas for the third time this season. He's off. Five meetings between these two teams. This fastball to Cisco lost nine to three. As the starting pitcher and was knocked out in the fifth inning. But then he beat Arkansas in the Southwest Conference tournament. Three to two, pitched a complete game, allowed only three hits. Count is two and two on Mike Cisco. Curveball hit in the air to right field. Cesarek is right there to make the catch. And number four, third baseman, Don Thomas. Two men out. And the bottom half of the third inning. And we're threatening to have a one, two, three inning in the ball game. Rod Moore. Got a walk to start the, uh, this is Don Thomas, excuse me, Don Thomas is the batter. Don Thomas walked to start the second inning. Kevin Garner walked three men in the inning, and then a 3-2 pitch line off the top of the right field wall by Jim Kramers. Three-run double to tie the ball game. Count is one and one on Thomas. Pretty nice luxury that Cliff Gustafson has. You take supposedly your number one pitcher, Kevin Garner, out. He was 10 and 3 on the year. You bring in a guy that's 13 and 2. On the ground slowly to second. Todd Haney with a big hop. And the sides are tired. One, two, three. No runs have scored for the first time in the ball game. End of three. Texas five, Arkansas four. <laughs> Stadium, the site of the NCAA College World Series for the 38th consecutive year. This is the 41st annual NCAA College World Series. Texas has had teams here 24 times. Longhorns have won two championships under Cliff Gustafson, 1975 and 1983. They finished second in 84 and 85. In 84 to Cal State Fullerton and 85 to Miami. Top of the order for Texas, Elena Westbrook takes the ball. Westbrook was hit by a pitch his first time up and had a base hit his second time up. Drove in a run with his base hit little look at the worn out uh, shoe right there of Ray Harris. Watch how he attacks the, the rubber. A little bit more of an angle. Down is 3-0 and on Elena's Westbrook. He was caught stealing in the first inning for only the third time this season. 24 tries. He walks on four pitches. Now Harris has got a good move. Westbrook has good speed. Should be an interesting matchup. Number two. You're right there you see the angle that Ray Harris doesn't really square himself up and as a result the ball gets high and he square his body up It'd be a little easier for him Kobe Curlin the batter runner fake going pitch is taken up high Curlin came into the ball game hitting 394 High kick from Harris, the fastball misses. He's missed six straight. 
And he's going to get a visit from his pitching coach. From the wind-up position, we'll get another look at it a little bit later. And that's so important for a pitcher to what you call square yourself up. And by attacking the rubber at an angle like Harris does, so many things can go wrong mechanically. And every pitch so far has just flown high and outside. Dave Jorn, the pitching coach. And a right-hander, Tim Peters, is up in the bullpen for Arkansas. Norm DeBryan was hoping he wouldn't have to go to the right-handers. Prefers to have the left-handers in there, but Sibahar, his starter, was knocked out in the second inning, and Harris is struggling. Nobody out, count of 2-0 and oh on Kobe Curlin. And as Dave Jorn, the pitching coach, goes back to the dugout alongside him, the head man, Norm DeBryan. The Arkansas and Texas scoring better than eight runs per ball game on the average. Kobe Curlin takes the fastball for a strike. And the count is 2-1. and one. Texas leading 5-4. to four. This would be the pitch to run, to hit and run on right here if you're going to do it. Two and one. Harris has got to throw a strike. And a good fastball. Tim Brando's alongside the Arkansas dugout. What's going on, Tim? Norm DeBryan and the staff concerned about the mechanics now with Harris, particularly out of the stretch. And as Jim mentioned, he does have sort of a complicated motion. Runner goes. They've got him picked off. Kramer's throw to Cisco. They got him. Got him. There's the move by Harris. Westbrook breaking, and Harris picks him off. You know what makes this play, Sam? You've got to have a first baseman. Jim, Cr watch Kramers come off the bag to meet the ball. He's out of your picture right now. Uh, he makes an accurate throw. If he doesn't make that throw, there's a lot of first basemen, even on the big, you get a look at it, even on a big league level. Steve Garvey, and no knock on Garvey's ability, did not have the throwing arm to make that play right there. Down has gone full on Kobe Curlin. Second time Westbrooks has been caught. First time thrown out by the catcher Skeels. This time the play going 1-3-6 if you score. Fastball down low and another walk. So Sibahar walked three in an inning and two-thirds. Harris has now walked two, both of them here in the top half of the fourth inning. And Norm DeBryan concerned about his pitching right now. The warm-up action is stopped in the bullpen. And that pitch going high, bounced off the screen right back to the catcher. But Curlin goes down to second base. A wild pitch, that one way up there, got away from the left-hander Harris. Well, as Tim Brando reported, they're concerned about the mechanics of Ray Harris. With that complicated motion, you can tell really how out of sync he is. I mean, he almost threw that one out in the parking lot. Good play on the rebound by Steeles, but no chance as Curlin moves into second. Brian Cesaric, the batter. Last time up, he ripped the double. Now it's 2-0. On the leading hitter for Texas, Brian Cesare. Came into the game, hitting 424. Hits it foul. Back to the plate and back into the crowd. Andy Steele is giving it a look. Skills. Third team All America. All America teams. Announced yesterday, and a fine season for Andy Skeels of Arkansas. Cesaric, second team All-America first baseman, playing in right field today. There he is. Handled the left-hander, Sibahar, well last time. Now Harris brings him the curveball and misses, and the count is three and one. Low moving ball game, long counts. We've had nine full counts. Make it ten with Curlin up there. 
Here's the 3-1 pitch off the end of the bat. Down to Don Thomas at third. Across the Kramers in time. Good arm by Don Thomas, the third baseman, to get Brian Cesare. A little look at the play if you're Don Thomas, the third baseman. That ball squirts away. A difficult hop. Now watch this throwing arm. A little high. Big target over there. Gets him by a half a step. Now the slow moving game, the base on balls, they have an effect on the fielders out there, Sam. They're not going to be as sharp. You're not on your toes like the guys last night when Patterson and Richie Lewis were pitching in Hope and Ingram. They were up-tempo, throwing strikes ahead of hitters. Now here's Scott Coolball. We talked about the names that had a ring to them. I like the ring of Coolball. Cool name. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Scott Coolball, Coach Gustafson says, best all-around player he's ever had for never having gotten the honors he deserves. Well, he's playing in the shadow of Livingstone, the outstanding third baseman at Texas A&M. And Robin Ventura. Sure. But he has had an outstanding year. He's got 78 RBIs and broke the Texas home run record. Top prospect. Fastball misses, and it's 3-0 and on cool balls. Harris pitches very carefully. I don't really think right now, Sam, he's pitching carefully. I just don't know. I don't think he knows if he's on foot or on horseback. He's just <laughs> all over the place. What can he do to change, Jim? Is there anything, any adjustments he can make? Tough to make them during the game. I mean, an experienced pitcher can make them, but right now, DeBryan is faced with saying, hey, how much longer am I going to tolerate this? Uh, let's get him out and go to the bullpen tomorrow, see if we can do some work. 3-1 pitch, hit hard, one hop to Cisco at short. On the Kramers, and he gets out of it. For the first time, Texas is kept off the scoreboard. At the end of three and a half, the Longhorns of Texas five, the Razorbacks of Arkansas four. Well, we had a strange fourth inning. Neither team scored. <laughs> well, Texas didn't score in the fourth. Arkansas didn't score in the bottom of the third. So the last half inning for each team, something strange happened. Young Texas fan. Hasn't learned the hook and horn sign yet. Bet it won't be long, though. <laughs> they learned that sign early down there around Austin. Go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Texas leading five to four. Game three of the NCAA College World Series. Game four tonight, eight o'clock Eastern time. Stanford and Georgia. Mark Petkaisek brings a good fastball in the outside corner to the center fielder Rod Moore. One of three men who walked in the second inning off Kevin Garner and scored on the double by Jim Kramer. Missed outside. John Sanders and Joe Morgan will bring you all the action of the Stanford Georgia game. Fastball in the hole, base hit to left field for Rod Moore. And Moore with good speed. Leads off the bottom half of the fourth inning. See if Arkansas put something on here. Dan Campbell, the number nine man, handles the bat well. Cool ball, even with a bag at third, now creeping in. Nice punt laid down. And both players, the catcher and the pitcher, shied away from the ball. They got their signals crossed up. Johnson and Petkaisek going for the ball, went away from it, each thinking the other would take it. It's a bunt single for Dan Campbell. And Arkansas with runners at first and second. Now we talked about the catching ability and the all-around ability of Brian Johnson. There's just an indecision right there. It's the catcher's call to take charge, but Petkaisek got to the ball so quickly, I think Johnson thought he might have had the play. Now Scott Pose, a good punter, the leadoff man, takes the ball. Arkansas trailing five to four. Runners at first and second, nobody out. And Brian Johnson wants to change mass. Actually, Ooh. excuse me, Sam, Pet Kaiser in Texas penalized there because of that man's ability to get off the mound. Most pitchers would not have been there, and Johnson would have made the play by himself easily. 
Bell, the first baseman, is in on the infield grass. Pose squared and took a strike. Get another look at it right here. Watch Pet Kaiser. He really gets off the mound in a hurry. Right down there. See, if he's not there, Johnson just takes the play. Oops, a little dance step they had going on. Hold on. Pet Kaiser off the mound. The throw is not in time. He missed the base. Bell surrounded the base. He touched everything but. And everybody's safe. Bell had to get back. He was charging for the bunt, looking for the bend. He had to get back and miss the base. It almost looked like Pose had a little difficulty. Boy, Arkansas has put down a couple of good bunts. There, Pet Kaisik. Let's see if Pose hits the bag. He just barely caught it himself. And you see the right foot as Bell steps for the base. He didn't get it. So the bases are loaded with Kelly Zane, the batter. Texas infield looking for two. Cool ball's in on the grass at third, and Bell in on the grass at first. Shortstop in second base and double play depth. Arkansas with the bases loaded, and nobody out. The error charged to the first baseman. Lenny Bell on that play. Ball popped foul down the right side. Bell going over, but it's back out of play. At Kaisik ahead of Kelly Zane. Zane coming into the game hitting 341. Tied for the team lead with 67 runs scored. Has 75 base hits. It's a sacrifice on the bunt. Credit a sacrifice to Scott Pose and an error to the first baseman, allowing Pose to reach safely. Base is loaded. Nobody out for Arkansas. Fastball, he just got a piece. That was a good pitch. Oh, Pet Kaisik has really come back after the shaky defense there to load the bases. Made an outstanding slider on the first pitch here to Zane, and then has come back with two good fastballs, one outside and the other one up and in. But Arkansas laying down two good bunts, and with the aluminum bat, tough to do. One by Campbell, especially good. Curveball hit on the ground. Great play by Lenny Bell. He goes to the plate. Just in time. What a play by Lenny Bell. They've got the force at the plate. That has to help Pet Kaisik's feelings. Diving play by the first baseman, Lenny Bell. Good defensive play here. You see Gustafson has Bell playing up even with the bag. Makes the diving stop. Now from his knees, watch Johnson on the receiving end of that throw as a catcher. See, he's stretching out like a first baseman. Force play, no tag necessary, of course. Great play on the receiving end by Johnson. Mm -hmm. What a throw from his knees by Lenny Bell. Now here's Jim Kramers again with the bases loaded. Last time up with the bases loaded in the second inning. He hit the top of the wall in right center field for a three-run double. That tied the game at 4-4 at that point. Texas leading 5-4. There's one, boy, one man out here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Arkansas with the bases loaded. And good speed on the bases for Arkansas all the way around. Ben Kaisik pitching out of the stretch is Norm DeBryan, the head coach of Arkansas. Look, curveball hit on the ground, base hit. Here's Pose heading for the plate. He'll score, and Arkansas takes the lead on a two-run single by Jim Kramer, who now has five RBIs. The Hogs have taken a six-to-five lead. You see as if you're looking from left field. Watch what a good job Kramers does. The pitch outside part of the strike zone. He goes the other way with it. Look at this swing. Keeps that knee and shoulder in. Head on the ball. Hey, we're seeing some great hitting techniques from the college hitters here. Kramers pulls the ball off the wall the last time up. Now goes the other way for an RBI single. Runners at first and second with one man out. Andy Steele, the cleanup man, takes the strike. 
So Arkansas takes the lead for the first time in the game. Six to five. Three hits and an error in this inning for the Razorbacks and Jim Kramers with two hits and five RBIs in the ball game. Fastball way inside. Kramers with the five RBIs today now has 75 and he's one behind Skeels, the man at the plate who's the team leader. Skeels walked and popped out. Two trips today. Off speed pitch on the outside corner. It's been a slow ball game, but it's been filled with lots of excitement, lots of action, and a lot of runs. Well, if you like pitching, you would have enjoyed yesterday. If you like hitting, so far you enjoy today. One, two, on the ground to the first baseman, Bell. Top hop, and he makes the stab. Good play by Lenny Bell to stay with that tough hop and get the out at first base. Well, the Longhorns play on that artificial surface. They're not used to this. Watch this hop. Great stop by Lenny Bell. Good athletic ability and reflexes right there. Not an easy hop to handle. And don't forget, this is a man, number one, when he plays, normally plays on artificial turf and doesn't play all that much anyway. Usually only plays when Kevin Garner is the starting pitcher. 